Uh, hi, everybody. My name is John Tran. And this is my uh, second uh, Linux conference. Um, when I submitted the question, I was really hoping that uh, Ben or uh, Dan from Intel would actually get up and talk about this so I could ask questions. Uh, disclaimer, I'm not an expert in this area. I'm working on hardware design, and I'm working with emerging memory suppliers. Um, and uh, I didn't put a CXL, what is CXL slide in my presentation because I didn't want to insult the audience. But then at lunchtime, somebody said, well, what's CXL? And, I, and they're in this room. So I, uh, I should probably just uh, briefly say, uh, you know, for, C for us, CXL is a way to attach uh, memory devices that wouldn't otherwise be able to attach like through the DDR DRAM bus. Uh, there's other aspects to CXL, uh, ways to do like cache coherency and, and uh, accelerators and that sort of thing. And that, that's all good, and it's, but it's a little side of what I'm interested in. Uh, at Seagate, we're doing a lot of work in, in looking at emerging memories. Uh, it's very expensive for an emerging memory company. A lot of these are startups to put uh, a DDR DRAM interface on their parts. It may even not work from a timing perspective, um, but CXL solves that problem. What's more, some of these memories are persistent and uh, DDR DRAM, you know, DDR5 it really wasn't designed around persistence, so that makes things interesting there as well. Where's your slide? Um, so I'm going to talk through some failure modes and things that I'm, I'm worried about trying to set up a system. And maybe these things have already been thought through, and maybe the uh, kernel already accommodates for them. Uh, if so, I apologize, and, and uh, I'll be happy. But uh, if not, um, um, maybe we should talk through them. Uh, so first thing is the memory devices that we're going to be attaching to these systems are, are going to be uh, a little bit different than traditional DRAM. The performance is different. We've already talked about there's mechanisms for you know, uh, different performance latency and throughput. Uh, there are ways of informing the system about that. Um, some devices have persistence. You know, the non-volatile and others are volatile. Endurance and wear out. Uh, failure modes and error behavior are, are different, and reliability of the parts are different. Um, you know, we're looking at things, uh, you know, things as diverse as ferroelectric memories, carbon nanotubes, resistive RAM, um, just to name a few. Uh, you know, th there's already been, uh, you know, a lot of work with phase change. I Intel's Optane prod product uh, is a, a good example of one. Um, so. You know, when we're thinking about failure modes and, and reporting, CXL introduces many different ways of uh, informing systems. So there are multiple paths through CXL uh, uh, for telling the system, you know, the kernel, that things are either going downhill or going bad. Um, there's the CDAT, the coherent device attribute table, um, which basically is a way for the, the uh, CXL device to say, this is my performance, this is my throughput, my latency. There are also ways that CDAT allows for a device whose performance is maybe degrading to say, uh, here are my new numbers. Um, you know, you, you, there are ways to give updates through that CDAT. There are event records. You know, uh, you can, the, the device can post an uh, event record that it needs maintenance or its performance is going downhill. So that's kind of another path. There are messages, uh, and there are, there are other mechanisms in, in the protocol that allow for this sort of reporting. Um, I haven't seen an implementer's guide to inform somebody like me trying to put together a system as to thou must do this, this, and this, or this way is prefer, pref, you know, preferred. Um, so that, that's a challenge here. Um, oh yeah, I should also mention, you know, devices can report, you know, poison or errors on individual reads. So like if you do, uh, you know, a 64-byte cache line and, and uh, you have ECC and it comes back bad, you can, uh, you, you can poison the read. And if the whole device goes belly up, you can uh, go viral with it. Uh, switches, uh, CXL, they're, they're different versions, and the 2.0 version enabled switches. And so um, this is our, say here, this is our emerging memory. We have a device controller. Uh, this device controller can either plug directly into the uh, computer or uh, uh, can go through a switch. And, uh, you know, when you, when you talk about switches, now you're talking about possibly having uh, the CXL memory devices in a different row in the server. Um, and, and so uh, it, 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 it 
takes away a physical barrier. And I know you can do offline on DRAM. I haven't tried it, um, but in Polo DRAM, but uh, it's probably a lot more likely to happen with CXL uh, if it's in a, in, in, a, in a one by or whatever and a person comes by and pulls it. That's uh, a possible issue. Um, and so, uh, you know, I have to think about if, if somebody, if, if one of these fails or if the switch uh, uh, sees that somebody's pulled it, uh, how the switch, you know, what's the preferred way for the, the uh, uh, device to inform the, the, the uh, kernel that that's happened. There's also the notion of dynamic reef configuration, which the buzzword is composability. And uh, basically, you know, what that is, is if you have multiple microprocessors attached to it, and imagine you're allowed a, a large CSP and uh, some company doesn't pay its bill or another company wants more memory, you can potentially uh, dynamically give more memory to one uh, processor than uh, another. So you, you, you may take some away or allocate more. Um, you know, and, and uh, CXL provides multiple ways of, of setting up these uh, switches. One way uh, that we're, we're thinking is probably the more likely is an out-of-band fabric manager that would configure the switches and allocate uh, uh, different memory and, and change it on the fly, potentially. Um, and so, but that uh, a fabric manager is likely out of band, and so then that gets to the question of if, if the fabric manager is allocating more or less memory to, to uh, a particular processor, you know, how does it say, uh, I want to offline, uh, if it's doing it gracefully, you know, it would, it would say, I want to offline this memory, the uh, uh, kernel would go then and unmap those lines and, uh, and say, okay, you're good to go, and, uh, and then the... Uh, Fabric Manager would go and do its reconfiguration. Um, I don't know if that aspect of you know, communication, there, there are mechanisms for it, but how it actually works, uh, and, and then whether it's, this is you know, a, a, a generic device driver or a, a custom device driver, or you know, it's something that wants to happen in the kernel, what, what answer you know, is, is there, or, or is it up in the user mode? Is, um, is that Fabric Manager? Fabric Manager example, is it making it look like a PCI device removal and add for memory to simulate the memory add? It, it might, but, but it could also be a shrink or grow, too. Um, okay. You know, it may not just be an outright re removal. It may be a shrink. You know, maybe I'm taking some memory. Um, I'll go to my next slide here. Okay. Um, yeah, so, and, 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 yeah, so th this is kind of a... Uh, a worse case, and I'm, I'm sure to a Adam's point, you know, it's going to be a lot more generic than this to start with. But uh, here you have multiple hosts coming in, and hosts can interleave, and so their, their memory, which is is great for performance uh, in in general. Um, you know, you, you want to uh, if you're doing a page flush and you want you know sequential accesses to go to multiple devices, you know, motherhood. But the problem is. Uh, it, then if I want to shrink uh, this guy, or uh, uh, let, let's say we're not even interleave, but uh, you know, maybe shrink all of them, uh, I'm, I'm now, uh, in a, if I fail uh, a device, so there are two aspects here. If I shrink, um, you know, I've got to do that communication back to the host system. Um, and then the other aspect is if I fail, I may have interleave data that now has to be, uh, you know, you have to pull coals in it essentially in the in the in the page table um, and deal with that failure mode. I don't know if the kernel has any uh, mechanisms for regular interleaved memory, you know, deallocating or dealing with errors at that. But you know, if this can, interleaving can be as fine grained as like 64 bytes, and so uh, it's going to get tricky. Matthew, I, I, I think. I think our usual method for dealing with that kind of situation is crashing. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. H halt and catch fire. <laughs> I've, I've seen a lot of that trying to get this stuff working, so. <laughs> uh, one other aspect I, I wanted to mention is security. Um, you know, CXL 2.0 enables security, so there are uh, keys. Uh, the keys can be individualized uh, uh, to the to the you know individual uh, memory uh, devices, 
and, and so if you, if you lose a device, there's the whole aspect of, of uh, key management and, and, uh, and all that, and, and uh, you know, how do you deal with loss and how do you deal with migration and, and, and all that. Um, and so r really, it, it, uh, there's some religious philosophical arguments, and I, I don't know if, if, if this stuff is solved. I'm, I'm curious to hear uh, feedback from you, Dan, and, and, and Ben, and others as far as uh, what forum there is. You know, we, you got CXO, which is great. It gives you all these different ways of doing things. Um, you've got the kernel community, but you, you know, the, the, where the rubber hits the road of trying to put these two together, how, 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 does that, uh, how, how does that get settled? You know, do we agree on this is the way you do things and that gets published you know, from, on lwn.net or uh, you know, how, how is that uh, gonna happen? Um, you know, and so, certainly some of this can, can wait until these things prove viable and, and, and valuable in the marketplace, but it's generally preferable if we can at least give some guidance up front. Um, and so in general, it's, it, you know, it's a call for help and, and just as far as what we do where, how we standardize this, and uh, how, how do we take this to the next level. And uh, with that, I, I'm, I'd like to hear you guys' feedback as far as how we go on that. Adam. Well, yeah, absolutely. I, I, would, I would love to be able to write, write LWN articles to tell vendors what to do. Um, <laughs> that, sound, that sounds great. <laughs> um, yeah, so like, where do we, so on the last slide you're talking about security. My understanding of the, the, the current definition of the, of the security commands, they're only for persistent memory. You're, you're, not, you're not thinking about security for volatile memory, right? This is the data Even at rest. I, I, we've gotten feedback from customers that they want that link encryption for volatile memory even. Link encryption, oh, oh so you're, okay, you're talking about yeah. like the yeah. IDE not, stuff. Not data at rest. Not um, data at rest. Data at right. rest is separate than link. I'm talking about the 2.0 mechanism, yeah. Yeah, 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 we have this massive pile of specs to get to to implement link encryption and, and, wrestling, and wrestling with PCI Express as well. So that's a, I'd like to put that aside. <laughs> <laughs> so would I. <laughs> um, how to deal with loss. So you're talking about like device loss? Device loss, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, d device loss, yeah. That, I think that's, that's, that's the halt, halt and catch fire situation. Um, and like, in, unless you can, like, yeah. So say they're just running containers or something. It's the, the kernel is all on DRAM and and you know whoever is just it got a bunch of containers. You know, is, is there a mechanism then to go and, and error out those sorts of things? Yeah. I mean, I, so the I think the simplest way to think about this is pretend it's a dim. Yeah. If you pull out a dim, you're dead. Like. Mm -hmm. Well, at least the current version of spec, even the electricals don't support, I think, the actual data loss if you, if you just yank the device. So, um, so yeah, I think it does with CXL 2.0. Okay. We, we had a comment on the line, then we'll go over here. Yeah, I will say for, the, for things like interleave and trying to recover from errors there, I mean, I, I can't imagine we'd ever be able to do something like recovering, um, you know, on a 64 byte boundary or something. Um, I mean, I, I would take a really close look at what the current error handling is that we have in the kernel. And, you know, that is in the end in the hardware probably focused at, at the 64, you know, byte level as well. But we only handle it at pages. And, you know, even if memory fails at a page, at a four byte granularity, we start axing pages out of, you know, out of existence. So um, I, I, would, I would first kind of look at the existing mechanisms and make sure that you need something different than that. I know CXL has all this crazy stuff that it can actually do, but I think the real question is how many of the capabilities the kernel you know, really cares about and can really leverage. For the most, for the most part, like, it just follows normal DDR air handling, so things, things machine check, pages get offline. I think the new use cases that CXL brings is somebody was sent out there to pull out card A and they pulled out card B. Um, and that will be a massive memory failure event I mean, but, the, but all we can do is hope that we can log things before the kernel crashes in, in, in those situations. Um, but at least for, like if you look at the pers persistent memory side, at least there is an error model on top to kind of, you, could tell, you can tell the file system to give up, you can tell people to give up, that, and, and the page might not be mapped in something critical where the whole kernel comes down. You might lose the file system, but you won't lose, you won't lose everything. Um, 
but yeah, that's the main thing I think for, from the loss side is just being able to communicate 16 terabytes are now gone. I'm starting to log uh, that, that range and if it makes it out there, uh, but yeah, there'll be other alarms going off when that happens. Mm -hmm. Just, just one other comment. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there was. I think those massive loss events are going to be relatively rare, and and I agree that the the best thing is, you just crash the system, you know, you dynamically reconfigure and reboot, and and carry on, right? Uh, uh, if it's a, if it was a persistent memory, and and you know, you know. You expected data to be retained out there. You know that's sort of a separate problem. That you know, again, something out of band has to deal with recovering that level of stuff, right? Either because it's you know it does have multiple failure domains that it can recalculate and you know reconstitute, you know, in some other thing, or or it's backed up on storage or whatever, right? To to do that. So uh, again, I, I I wouldn't worry about any of those issues, those big level issues. Okay. In, anywhere in the near term, perhaps ever. Yeah, the, the only thing I was going to add is from a recovery standpoint, um, if you do have backups, you will be able to carefully select which device is interleaved where with the current interfaces, and so you could rebuild um, without too much trouble. And I don't know, if, hmm. Dan, you've thought about the user space tooling for that, but it shouldn't be a tremendous difficulty to do that. So, you know, even though you you just blew up in a fire you, you can you, you can recover it's not like you're just you're just lost at that point on the composability side i'm curious on the shrinks uh, for example uh, is there support for that sort of thing especially if it's interleaved um, i think one of the we thought about that i think one of the observations is that cxl basically gives enough rope for us to turn bare metal systems into virtual machines in terms of kind of ballooning and, and those kind of, like that the same kind of model where you want to inject memory into a guest and get memory back out of a guest is now is a bare metal problem because we want to inject memory into a CXL domain and pull memory out of a CXL domain. Um, so I'm hoping that we use the same interfaces. We're not, like, they mostly, like we, we do some infrastructure to glue them together, but for the most part, like, it, it kind of looks the same um, from from the kernel side that memory memory showing up and disappearing. Yeah, so that would mostly rely on uh, memory hot plug, which uh, uh, increasing is um, kind of thing that works. Shrinking it's in a much worse position because uh, if you want to shrink that, you essentially uh, reduce the usability of that memory because that means that you can only use that for the movable mem memory so that you can migrate that somewhere away. And then we are back to the question, uh, how much of that uh, movable memory you've got on your system because then we are back to high mem systems where essentially uh, a large part of your memory cannot be used by your kernel for anything. Yeah. And explode by metadata that's just on uh, on the regular memory and all those problems. So yeah, shrinking can get pretty complex. So w when you said, I think you said low me level memory, D does that mean non-pinnable? Uh, yeah. yeah. So only for the user space and only if that user space behaves and doesn't pin that memory by some other means. And so oh, quite a lot of restrictions right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and as much as the, the device DAX access interface is kind of weird, it, it's, it's kind of there to bridge that gap of like the MM, we can add to it and you might be able to get it back. It's a, it's a maybe and not a, not a guarantee. Mm -hmm. And if you need more guarantees, then like if you need strict guarantees, then you're, you're definitely, I feel like you're in the device access mode where I can, I can go and I can rip away your device and shut everything down of using it. I, and I don't have any concerns about the kernel of putting anything useful or uh, that needs for its own survival there. Um, yeah, so, so, so shrinking as long as if you, but yeah, but when you ask application developers, they, they don't want to map a device, they want, I want to do a malloc. Um, um, and so they want their, they kind of want their cake and eat it too. I want to be able to malloc and I want to be able to rip it away from the kernel whenever I want to and those things conflict. And can folks in the room hear me? 
Yes. So uh, one of the things hardware folks can do that would be really helpful here is to, to help the kernels like hot remove mechanisms. Um, the kernel is, you know, okay at evicting a memory area so that we can, you know, yank the memory out. But if the hardware vendors could, for instance, let us have more flexibility to say, hey, um, we can get all this one gigabyte of memory removed except for like this one 4K page. If you could, for instance, let us do that where we can leave one straggler in, in an area and then you can yank the rest out. And with your CXL magic, you can map things underneath. That makes our job a lot easier. That makes it much more likely we can give you, we can you know, deliver success. Or as an example, like maybe you said, hey, we need to remove some of your physical address space, but the kernel gets to pick what physical address space goes away. Then maybe we can start evicting things and say, oh, we just happened to be able to evict this one, but not that one. And then you, you know, you unmap it underneath, you know, in, in your magic switch layers. But if there are things the hardware can do that lets the kernel be more fallible, that's uh, that would be really, really nice. And that means that we can probably, you know, like right now what happens for, for hot remove is basically something says, hey, this exact physical range is going away. We need you to evict all of your use from every last byte of this. And you have to be perfect. That's really, really hard for the kernel. But if you can come to us and say, hey, can you evict most of this? And you can you can screw it up a little bit. We're better at that. I, I, I wanted to comment on, on your ask, right, on, uh, about how, how to coordinate, right? In, in some ways, I have the same problem too, right? I'm, I want to know, like, I see patches up on the mailing list and they kind of show up, right? And so what, what I'd really like to, to see is if there's any way you could have a call, like as a group, right, and, and discuss uh, what's going on in terms of, of CXL patches, uh, what vendors are thinking, what consumers are thinking, and kind of all get on the same, same call and, and to constrain uh, the problem space. Yeah, I do want to put Willie on the spot, but, but, but I know you run like a periodic call and the log, log, logistics of setting that up, success, what, what, would you do, what would you do differently or anything? Yeah, um, it was actually LSFMM in, in Puerto Rico where we decided that, you know, there's a whole bunch of us working on transparent huge page kind of stuff and that, that was the THP cabal and uh, I think we, we, we grew to like 16 people in our, our biggest Zoom meeting. Um, it was invaluable, utterly invaluable to have everyone know that every couple of weeks they get to say their thing about what's going on. Um, we we made it happen. I mean, it worked. Uh, I mean, I, th I think things things would have been a lot better with some in-person meeting because you know two years of that was COVID, right? So we, we didn't see we didn't have this conference for two years straight, um, and that sucked, and definitely delayed what was happening. But the having the every two week meeting, if nothing else, as a status update, like what have you done? in the last two weeks, it's like, that's, that's kind of an important check-in, like, how's everything going? Um, I mean, we, 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 we settled on two weeks as being a good cadence, but, um, you know, you, you might feel differently. Um, so yeah, we just have a Zoom meeting, and um, anyone can do that. <laughs> I, I schedule it for an hour, um, but if everyone said their piece and nobody's anything to say, then we'll hang up after 20 minutes. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I, I'd, be, I'd be interested in coordinating, coordinating something like that. Um, yeah, it, it would, it would, it would be the ground rules of something that would be only talking about things in terms of Linux, open source, open public specifications. Nobody, nobody wants to hear anybody else's proprietary development plans, but, but there's a lot of common, common stuff that we can, that we can talk about. Um, yeah, yeah, so I'd be open to that. Hey, you can sign, sign, sign Samsung up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Good suggestion. Thanks, everybody. Okay, yeah, thank you.